morning everyone I'm back with another video and today's topic is a chemistry topic and it's really difficult and it's going to be difficult to explain but we'll see how we get on today's topic is electrolysis so I'm just going to give you an overview and then we'll dive into it and we'll talk about some ionic equations so first of all let's talk about the word electrolysis right electro obviously means to do with electricity lysis means breaking apart so if you're asked for the definition of an electrolysis in the exam, you simply need to say it means breaking apart using electricity. Now, we need to talk about what the actual use of this process is. And we use electrolysis in things like aluminium manufacture and also the chloride alkali industry. And that's when we break apart sodium chloride. When you're carrying out electrolysis, it's important that you use an ionic compound because electrolysis only works on compounds which are made up of ions, therefore you can't carry out electrolysis on covalent structures. It's really useful at this point to quickly dip into the chemical structures aspect of chemistry and I've created another video on that if you're less sure of this topic, but simply remember that ionic compounds do not conduct electricity when solid and that's because the ions are not free to move. However, they do conduct electricity when molten or liquid and that is a crucial thing, a crucial property that we're going to use in electrolysis because what we're going to do is we're going to get an ionic compound and we're going to dissolve it in a solution containing water in order to free all the ions floating around. Now depending on what you're electrolyzing, I hope that's actually a word, you are going to have different ions floating around. So if we take sodium chloride as our example, if you dissolve that in water what you're going to have floating is sodium ions, which is Na+, chloride ions, which is Cl-, H plus from the water, and you're going to have OH minus also from the water, which is obviously hydroxide. So you're going to have this soupy mix. Next up, you, you introduce electricity to the circuit, and if we're talking about in a simple school experiment, we could just have a power pack, and we're going to have a couple of electrodes, and all they are are the places where our two elements are going to form, and we dip those electrodes into the solution. Now, the electrodes are usually made out of either carbon or something like platinum because these things are very unreactive because we don't want them getting involved in the reaction. So let's make sure I'm telling you this right. So we dip our electrodes into the solution. There are special names for these electrodes because one of them is positively charged and one of them is negatively charged and I use PANK to help me remember which one's which. So positive anode, so that anode, the electrode, is positively charged and C, negative cathode, so the cathode is negatively charged. Because the cathode attracts ions, it's going to attract cations because it's the cathode. So because we know that the cathode is negative, it's therefore going to attract positive ions. So therefore cations are positive. I hope you're happy with that one because that is a bit confusing. If you're a bit confused, just talk about them in terms of positive electrode, positive ions, negative electrode, negative ions. Because it is confusing and you don't want to get them the wrong way around in the exam. Remember an ion is a charged particle, it's a particle that's either lost or gained electrons. It will, it will go to, the ion will go to its relevant electrode and it will either gain or lose electrons depending on what it needs to do to become solid or gas. I've got to tell you a couple of rules now to do with electrolysis which will make it sound complicated but I promise if you follow these rules then you will not go wrong with this topic. So like I said there's a soupy mix of different ions but only one ion can discharge at the electrode. Now which ion it is depends on these rules. So first of all, if the metal ion is more reactive than hydrogen, then you find that hydrogen discharges at the electrode. So you won't get solid sodium forming, you'll get hydrogen gas forming. However, if the metal is less reactive than hydrogen on the reactivity series, you find that the metal forms. So something like copper, say you had Cu2 plus floating around, because copper is less reactive than hydrogen, you'll find that that discharges at the electrode and you'll end up with solid copper forming and you can see that as the coppery brownie metal that will form. When we talk about the negative ions, what you find here is that the halogens, the halide ions, discharge above anything else. So if you happen to have a group 7 element, because remember those are the halogens, something like bromine, chlorine, iodine, fluorine, if you have any of those in the soupy mix, that will be what discharges at the positive electrode. So you'll end up with chlorine gas forming, for example, bromine, iodine. Um, if there's anything else in there, so not a halide, you'll find that oxygen forms. Now, let's talk about what I really mean when, we talk, when we're talking about what's forming. So, like I said, we're going to take sodium chloride again. Remember I told you there's Na plus floating around, H plus, OH minus, Cl minus. So, what happens, I told you just now that hydrogen will discharge. 
So if you were to draw an ion equation, you're going to have your hydrogen ion, which is H+, and you're going to be forming hydrogen gas. Remember hydrogen is diatomic, so you're going to be forming H2. What do you need to do then to get from H plus to the gas? Well, we've got to get rid of that positive charge, and how we do that is by adding an electron, because an electron is negative. So if you have H plus plus an electron, then you're going to produce hydrogen. However, I just told you that there are two hydrogens which are produced, so you need two electrons and two hydrogen ions. Let's take another example, copper. So remember copper discharges because it's less reactive than hydrogen. So we're going to have Cu2 plus, making copper solid. Because it's a 2 plus ion, we're going to need two electrons in order to neutralise it. So our ionic equation is Cu2 plus plus 2e minus forms copper solid. Make sure you write the state symbols. Things get slightly trickier if we're talking about our negative ions because they are slightly more complicated. So let's take chloride as an example, which is Cl minus, and we're trying to form Cl2. So we've got our Cl minus, we're forming Cl2. So the Cl minus is obviously negatively charged, and we need to lose some of that negativity. So in our ionic equation, we're going to just literally minus some of that negativity by minusing an electron. So it'll be Cl minus minus an electron because you're taking the negative charge away from the chloride ion in order to neutralise it. I really hope you're following this. Because it's Cl2, oh no, my phone's ringing. Oh well. Because it's Cl2, you're going to need two chloride ions and two electrons in order to counteract that. Sometimes people write ionic equations in a different way and they say, that you can have your Cl minus and you're making Cl2 and what you do is you add electrons on the end rather than taking them away. It's up to you how you do it and if that's confusing just ignore the last thing I said and follow my initial explanation. So in the exam they might give you any compound, remember it will be an ionic compound and they're going to ask you what discharges. So we're going to quickly talk about a couple of examples. Let's take potassium iodide as our example. So it's dissolved in water, so we know that the ions will be K plus, I minus, OH minus, and H plus. So, why is my phone still ringing? So we're going to take our potassium and we're going to realise that it is more reactive than hydrogen because it's a group 1 metal, it's incredibly reactive, and based on the rules I just told you, hydrogen will therefore discharge at the negative electrode, so you'll find that hydrogen gas forms. So that will be H plus, forming H2. How do you make H plus form H2? Where well, you're going to add an electron. Remember, because it's diatomic, you need two of each, so make sure that's a balanced equation. Right, at the positive electrode, we've got the option of forming either iodine or the possibility of forming oxygen. Um, in this case, you're going... Oh, who is phoning me? In this case, because you've got a halide, and remember I told you that trumps... You can see this is a kind of game of top trumps you'll find that that usurps all other elements, so you're going to form iodine. Right, so we're going to have I minus forming I2. Because we've got a negative charge, we need to get rid of that, so how are we going to do that? We're going to literally minus an electron from it, keep it balanced because it's diatomic, and you'll have your equation that looks like this. Let's just quickly touch on oxygen if it forms. This is the equation you need to learn in order to show that oxygen forms, and you're going to write this equation so that's the equation you will need to learn, and you'll see that it does make sense in terms of the charges. So that's really everything I wanted to say about electrolysis. It is a complicated topic. Have a look at some past exam questions just to see what sorts of questions they ask. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. The student's teacher uses the separators to electrolyze a pure sample of molten lead 2 bromide. The student records these observations. A small blob of silvery liquid appears at one electrode. A brown substance forms at the other electrode. The lamp stops working soon after the teacher stops heating the lead to bromide. Which is the correct statement about this electrolysis? First of all, A, the brown substance is bromide. No, it's not, because yes, it's bromine, but you've got to get the endings on the words correct. And this is more of an English point, but remember the element is bromine in the periodic table, so that's not correct. The products of both elements, well, I'm pretty sure that is the answer I'm going to go for, but I'm just going to check the other two. The silvery liquid forms at the positive electrode. That's wrong, because the silvery liquid is obviously a metal and metals form positive ions. Um, positive ions would never be attracted to the positive electrode because they would repel, so that's false. The silvery liquid is molten lead to bromide. Again, false, because it's an element that is being discharged at the electrode, not a compound. This is such a hard question, but the answer is B, the products of both elements. The student writes this half equation to show the reaction which the brown substance forms. Identify the two mistakes. 
in her half equation. Right, first of all, we have issues um, looking at the product, which is bromine. Remember, bromine is diatomic, as are all the halogens, so it should read Br2, not just Br. And the other issue with it is that it is a negative ion that's becoming an element, and because it's negative, it needs to lose electrons, and what they have here is they have it gaining electrons, so many, many issues. Part 3, explain why the lamp stops working after the teacher stops heating the lead to bromide. That's to do with ion... Um, chemical structures is because the ions are no longer free to move. Lovely. The diagram shows the diaphragm cell used in the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. Explain what is meant by the term electrolysis. I just said that. And use your common sense um, if you can't remember. So electrolysis is the breaking apart of a substance using electricity. Identify gas A, gas B and solution C. Right, let's look at gas A. Okay, it's on the positive electrode side which means that the gas um, formed from a negative ion. Well, let's remind ourselves which ions were present. It was Na, sorry, yeah, it was Na plus H plus Cl minus and OH minus. Um, I just told you that halogens always win, which means that this gas has to be chlorine. Right, gas B. Okay, it's forming on the negative electrode, which tells us that it has to have formed from a positive ion. The positive ions present were hydrogen and also sodium. Remember I told you the least reactive element always forms, so in this case it is hydrogen, so gas B is hydrogen. Solution C therefore is the leftover ions and we have leftover Na plus and OH minus, so solution C has to be sodium hydroxide. It's like a puzzle. C. Sodium is manufactured by the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. Sodium is produced at the negative electrode and chlorine is produced at the positive electrode. Why does the sodium chloride need to be molten before it will conduct? Because the ions um, need to be free to move, basically. Um, next up to the ionic half equation for the formation of sodium is Na plus plus E minus 2Na, right? The ionic half equation for the formation of chlorine from chloride ions. So the chloride ions look like this. Chlorine is diatomic, so I need to do that. And then we need to shove in our electrons. There are two ways of doing that. Um, I'm going to start, actually, sorry, by first of all bouncing my chlorines, and I'm going to write a 2 there. Now I'm going to sort out my electrons. Right, there are two ways, so I'm going to choose to minus the two electrons like this. But alternatively, you could have provided this answer if you're happier doing it that way. It's just as right. The electrolysis of sodium chloride solution is an, in a, is an industrial process. Why do chloride ions move to the positive electron electrode? Well, that's because they are oppositely charged and therefore they're attracted. The sodium chloride solution contains two types of positive ions, sodium ions and hydrogen ions. Tick the reason why hydrogen is produced at the negative electrode and not sodium. Hydrogen and a gas? No, that's irrelevant. Hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. I like that answer. Hydrogen is a non-metal. Uh, that's not a reason. Hydrogen ions travel faster than sodium ions. Again, not a reason. So put a tick in the second box. Hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. Solution X is alkaline. Which ion makes solution X alkaline? Well, that's OH minus. Aluminium is extracted from aluminium oxide using electrolysis. The diagram shows a cell used for the extraction of aluminium. The electrolyte contains cryolite. Explain why. Right, this should really be in my aluminium video, which I have actually made. But um, it is due with electrolysis, so I'm going to write about it here. You need to say because cryolite lowers the melting point of aluminium, so, so less energy is needed to melt it effectively. Oxygen is formed at the positive electrode. Complete and balance the equation for this reaction. Right, okay, we know that oxygen is diatomic, so there's a 2 on the right-hand side, so I need to put a 2 here. And now 2 at the front means that there's now 4 electrons on the left-hand side, so I need to write plus 4e minus here. The positive electrode in the cell is used up during the process. Explain why. Well, that's because um, oxygen forms at the electrode and what that does is it reacts with the carbon of the electrode to form carbon dioxide and therefore the carbon dioxide burns away the electrode. And yeah, that's actually more than enough for two marks. Question three. The diagram shows apparatus used by an experiment by a student to investigate electrolysis. The student was given a solution by the teacher. The solution contained a mixture of ionic compounds. Name the particles which carry the electric current through the metal wires. Well, remember that's the delocalised electrons, and in the solution, that's definitely going to be ions. The table shows the ions in the solution. The reactivity series, oh, blah, blah, blah. Which element is most likely to be formed at the negative electrode? Well, let's first of all make it very clear. It's going to have to be a positive ion, so we're looking on the left-hand side of the table. Looking down, we've got zinc, iron, hydrogen, and copper. 
The answer here is copper. Why? Because copper is the least reactive element. Oh, and explain as fully as you can why I've chosen this element two marks. First of all, because the copper ion is positively charged, and second of all, because it is the least reactive. The electrolysis of sodium chloride solution is an industrial process. The reaction at one of the electrodes can be represented by the equation shown below. The chloride ions are oxidised. Explain why. Remember all your rig here. Oxidation is loss of electrons, so just say that electrons are lost. Thank you.